Review, 2023 Bentley Bentayga EWB stretches the limits of luxury. Stretched out in the back seat of a 2023 Bentley Bentayga EWB with the airline specification rear seat package, I'm snoozing in the best seat in the automotive world. My feet are up on a footrest, my head is nestled in a soft pillow, and I'm being treated to the wave massage function on max intensity. To ensure I remain relaxed, the seat monitors my body temperature and turns on seat heating and or cooling as needed. It inflates and deflates in a rhythm like my own breathing. A postural adjustment function uses six thigh, shoulder, and lumbar massage pockets to adjust the seat shape up to 177 times every three hours to ease pressure points and avoid fatigue. It's all working quite well during my roughly half-hour doze. The airline specification doesn't come standard on the new Bentega EWB, extended wheelbase, but it would almost be a shame not to choose it. The extended wheelbase body style adds 7.1 inches to the Bentega, and all of it goes to back seat space, which opens up a generous 40.9 inches of rear seat legroom. However, in the stretched out relax mode, which reclines the seat back 40 degrees and pushes the front passenger seat forward, my 5 foot 9 frame doesn't give me quite enough room to straighten my legs without butting up against the front seat back. Bentley offers the airline specification with the Bentega EWBs for plus one or four seat configurations. The 4 plus one version has a rear center console that can flip up to convert to an occasional rear middle seat. A five passenger version is also available with a rear bench seat. Bentley hasn't shared a price for the package, but it will likely run about as much as a compact car. Then again, a Bentley rep said the EWB will already cost about 15% more than the roughly $190,000 Bentayga, so why not throw a Corolla on top of it? A supremely comfortable back seat isn't the only interior upgrade of the EWB. Every Bentayga EWB sports a front center console that extends back for rear seat access and includes a wireless charging cradle. It's also home to the removable touchscreen remote that rear seat passengers can use to control their 16 or 22-way power adjustable seats, as well as the climate controls, radio and media options, blinds, and interior lighting. The console is also home to buttons that activate power closing rear doors, a first for Bentley. In addition, the design of the diamond-stitched leather upholstery now uses thinner thread with a smaller, closer stitch arrayed in a new pattern that stretches the diamonds as they move farther off-center. Newly available Bentley Diamond Illumination sends light through perforations in the door trim. It uses 12 LEDs in the front doors and 22 in rears, and the intensity of the lighting can also be controlled through the remote. New heated rear door and center armrests add a little more comfort on cold days. Bentley even offers a new trim that embeds photo-etched metal badges under polished lacquer. Bentley offers the Bentega EWB in a new Azure specification that will sit alongside S Speed and Mulliner versions for the brand. While S and Speed are for sporty variants and Mulliner is the ultimate in personalization, Azure aims for quiet luxury. What better way to go Azure than with the airline specification? In the Bentley tradition, the EWB's interior changes are all quite breathtaking. For my money, would that I had so much, Bentley crafts the finest interiors on the market. They sport a combination of attractive design and high-quality materials that may be matched individually but not together. More room just means more Bentley interior goodness. Longer but just as dynamic. It may simply be a longer Bentega, but Bentley views the EWB as a fifth model line. The Leviathan sports 2,500 new parts compared to the vehicle it's based on and that includes a completely new underbody pan. All the length is in the rear doors and rear seat. Other exterior changes include a new grille inspired by the Flying Spur sedan with chrome vertical vanes in front of black mesh. The EWB also has a new 22-inch wheel design and a repositioned panoramic sunroof to provide more light for the setback rear seat occupants. However, Bentley aims to make the EWB drive like other Bentegas by adding rear axle steering that actually makes its turning radius slightly shorter than the standard wheelbase model at 38.7 feet. The rear wheels turn up to 2.5 degrees opposite the fronts at lower speeds to virtually shorten the wheelbase and make the EWB more maneuverable in tight spots. 
On the road, I can't tell the difference between the EWB and previous Bentegas I've driven. It has the same solid, planted, substantial feel that skirts the border between luxury and sportiness. The steering is direct and weighty, if perhaps a tad slow. Despite 5,542 pounds of weight, the big beast doesn't lean noticeably in corners and even responds well to attacking the turns on a few twisty Vancouver roads Bentley has chosen for the media drive. That's thanks to standard active anti-roll bars that firm up in corners to combat lean and disconnect on the straights for best comfort. Bentley also outfits the Bentega EWB with a standard three-chamber air suspension and adaptive dampers. With those 22s, the ride is firm but forgiving, even in sport mode. A twin-turbo 4.0-liter V8 turns the Bentega EWB's considerable weight into urgent forward momentum. The engine, shared with the likes of Porsche and Audi, makes 542 horsepower and 568 lbft of torque, pushing the Bentega EWB from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 4.5 seconds on the way to a top speed of 180 miles per hour. Thus far no hybrid or W12 are offered, and the W12 isn't expected to make it into the Bentega EWB except perhaps in a limited run model. The V8 can rumble and bellow in other applications, but here it's reserved, only raising its voice when pushed hard. It otherwise fades into the background, as do the smooth shifts from the 8-speed dual-clutch automatic. A mode selector has comfort, Bentley, sport, and custom drive modes for the street. During my drive, I stick mostly to sport to get the best engine response without paying too big a penalty in ride quality. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.